star or high tech in my cup. Big dog shit, I leave niggas puff. Baby, I'm a thug. Show me love when I step foot in your club. Back then, these hoes ain't want me for nothing. Nowadays, I can make a bitch choose up. Swear it feels good when you get it out the mud. Bitch, I got it out the mud. Walk through the mud to get a bag. Quit half stepping, so I gave it all I had. All right, man. We got another episode of Chant Talk. Show yes, my sir. boy, bro, Amir Mujahid, yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If y'all don't know, bro, I played high school football with my brother, man. Grinded for four years in high school. We sucked as a team, but as individuals, we was going crazy. We did. What you we know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man. Talk. Just let me know where you from, man. How you? You feel me? How you? So um, I'm o I'm from Oakland, California. Uh, I grew up on the street, 82nd MacArthur. Okay. Uh, that's it. I was out here until I was like 11 years old, and then moved down to Berkeley. Okay. Uh, yeah. Went to Martin Luther King Middle School, you know. Uh, okay. When I actually went to this, I I actually went to this school, it used to be a school here, I actually went here. Uh -huh. It's private school, Muslim school. Okay. But uh, I went to Ber uh, King, you know, knew the public schools and everything, and then, yeah, just, you know, trying to make new friends, and you know how that go. How was that, how was that shift, though, like, just going from a private school to public school? Was it different, or was it easy, it was an easy I mean, transition for here, you? classes were like, 13 max mm. you feel me going to public school not knowing you feel me class is 30 30 people uh -huh. you feel me but it wasn't really too too hard it was just getting used to the classes because okay. the classes there was a little different you know here i was learning islamic stuff and a little bit of math but out there it was just i don't know i guess i wasn't ready for it mm. so i had to do fifth grade twice uh -huh. and then i was in the right you know right grade and everything but when i went out there it was just it was too hard it was a little hard for me right. but um you know, I got through. I found a way. I right. found a way. I got through it. Uh, I took a couple of re remedial classes. You know, mm -hmm. I ain't the smartest dude, but I got through it. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. how'd you uh, how'd you start getting into football though? Like, when'd you start finally start playing, and like, what made you want to play? You know? Well, I don't even know. I didn't really watch football like that. Uh -huh. uh, I think seventh or eighth grade, I had a whole bunch of dudes that played for the Berkeley Bears. So I'm like, damn, I want to play football. That's <laughs> all it was. I, I want to be a football player. I want to go to the NFL. Uh -huh. That's all I, you know, I tell myself. And then I didn't start playing until freshman year. Uh -huh. And it, when I started, you feel me, I wasn't no good. You know, just like anybody going, I wasn't no good. It's a like, process. Couldn't you know? tackle. Nothing, nothing you feel right. me? But I just kept kept doing it. And then, um, you know, everything worked out in the end. Okay. But. Okay. And then you... Uh, so you got to be high, you know, freshman year. So you still like kind of adjusting, I'm sure it is. Yeah, Berkeley High, it was just all adjustments. Um, um, what's it called? So I don't know, like what, what was it? What was your experience like playing there? You know, like I said, we wasn't the the best team, but you know, we still had a lot of fun. We made shit happen in a way, you know, the best we could. But how was your experience personally? Like, what'd you take from? I there? mean, I can I can't complain. Like, you know, I could have went to any high school and played ball, and it, you feel me? It would have been the same thing, but. I, I built a brotherhood with you know the first mm -hmm. the first time ever playing football I built some you know some new friends I had some new friends and I just took you know took the best out of what we had mm -hmm. you know I me mean? uh, we we weren't good at all we sucked <laughs> but I can't complain so it, we started we started there and um, everything got better you know mm -hmm. um, when yeah. did, when did you start realizing like your potential like where you could be like you know when did you start feeling like all right like. You know, you wanted to play football, but when you like, okay, I'm actually like, I'm good at this shit. You know I feel like at Berkeley High, I always doubted myself. Mm -hmm. I always doubted myself. Just, I doubt myself now, but even, you know, then I doubted myself all the time. But I felt like I had the potential. Even though I sucked, I feel mm -hmm. like I had the potential to be He's great. always big as hell. Yeah, I was, you know, I had some size <laughs> on me, but I always thought I had the potential. Like, even though I sucked the whole, I feel like I sucked the whole time at Berkeley High. Like, my junior year was probably the best year for me personally, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I always felt like I had the potential to okay. be, you know, to being good. And then uh, you ended up going to Laney. What made you, like, decide that you wanted to go to Laney? Because, you know, it's it's uh, 100 Juco, not 100 Juco's, but, you know, it's a lot of Juco's out here. But when did you know, like, you wanted to go to Laney, and especially considering, like, uh, you knew what you was coming into. Like, I know a lot of people that go to Laney, and they don't even hit the field. You right. feel you got to really work for it. Right. So, like, how did you know that Laney was the best school for you? So, yeah. to be completely honest, like, I didn't even know it was Juco Ball. Mm -hmm. Like, out of high school, you know, watching the guys getting scholarships and just, just on YouTube, hearing about the guys getting all these good scholarships, I wanted to get a scholarship out of, out of high school. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my grades was a big part of it. Like, one thing that I tell the youngins is, like, 
you got to have them grades to go anywhere. Like, you can be good, but if you ain't got the grades, you're not going nowhere. That's, that's just that's, 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 that's all it is. Like, you're not going anywhere without them grades right. and the transcripts and stuff. But um, when I found out about the Juco ball, I'm like, Laney was the closest. I was going to go to Contra Costa, but Laney was the closest. And fortunately, you know, I could just catch Bart. I can walk to Bart and then catch it right mm -hmm. straight to Laney. So okay. everything worked out for a reason. And, um, yeah, but uh, at Laney, man, I feel like Laney, that's what really, like, when I start learning how to play football, up, yeah. yes. Uh, that first year I was there, 2017, I shirted, I gray shirted. Mm -hmm. So I had, a, I was, you know, practicing with the team, but I wasn't playing in the game. Yeah. So, um, but it was a learning process. But it was, right? a, yeah, yeah, it was a learning process, learning the defense, like learning how to play football pretty much. Because yeah. I, when I went there, I was outside backer, no good. Like, <laughs> from back, I, you know, like I'm, I might seem like I could play at back linebacker. Yeah. That's it's a lot of and work. And they had it's, you everywhere. You started a lot of middle, yeah, then I'm not, to, yeah. I'm not sideline to sideline. I don't, you feel me? That's, yeah. that's a lot of work playing outside backer. But they moved me to D line. I was putting on weight after that shirt year. And then that's when I started, you feel me, mm -hmm. getting better and learning the stuff. And then, Fortunately, like everything worked out for a reason. I started every game. You feel mm -hmm. me? That first year, that first year there, like playing, we won that state championship. How? So talk to talk to me about that, cause like, like I said, you know, we we didn't come from the best school, but then you go to Laney and you won a whole state championship. It's bro. just like, a surreal, light. yeah. You it's did. just a surreal moment, man. Like coming from Berkeley High, we didn't win what a couple games, like couple four games, games, games like, yeah. like four games. <laughs> Going to Laney, we was winning. Like it, it was a, it was a bumpy, it was bumpy there though, because we weren't like whooping teams. We were, we were beating teams, but it was like it was just bumpy the whole season. But you know, the grace of God, he, he, he brought us there, and we actually won it. What was, what, what do you think was the difference between a school like Laney, where y'all was successful, and a school like Berkeley High, where you see we had the talent individually, but it never came together. So what do you think was the difference between that? Um, probably the coaching. I mean. I don't know, like high school, you feel me? You can just, you it's free. You feel me? Laney, like you, it's a lot of guys, it's, you know, guys are adults. It's a lot of guys that don't go, you feel me? They say they're gonna play, but they don't. But um, the, it's just the coaching is a little different. It's mm -hmm. a little more serious, but at the same time it's not because it's still Juco. But um, I just say the coaching and, and then just, you know, having to pay for school and you pay, you feel yeah, me? Because you, you ain't got no scholarship going to Lane. You got to really right. pay for it. You got to get, so get out the mud. So, okay. That's, man, that's none a, of that Juco college like MBMCC and all that. Especially at Laney. It ain't no, none of that. Mud. Like, you get out the, you feel me? You got to work jobs and then people got kids and stuff and they still find a way to do it. So, you know, me personally, I, I would just, I, I've, I've always said I'm blessed because I didn't grow up with money or nothing, but. I always had like my parents were always there for me mm -hmm. and I always was in like walking distance of Berkeley and then I mean you know Berkeley High and then to the BART I can you feel me go to go straight to Laney and then eventually I got a little car they gave me yeah. you feel me so I was just fortunate like a lot of guys at Juco blessed. they grew yeah. yeah blessed they grew up you feel me they had a whole bunch of stuff going on like homelessness I didn't have to deal with none of that so I'm always grateful for what I got but I'm sure you took that in especially like you seeing all of that yeah, it's exactly. like then you you know you got your own situations exactly. too so exactly it's, exactly it's, it's different from high school because it's like now it's like it's this real life now like you exactly. feel me? You, a, you a grown ass man it's like all right I gotta get this scholarship because you feel me I gotta eat that, and then that, that's when I found found, uh, found that out like being an adult like when I turned like 18 19, 19 really mm -hmm. is when I started getting you feel me that was tough <laughs> real, you feel me but Everything you feel me, everything worked out, and um, yeah. I'm just blessed. So when you uh, when you start seeing interest from like these schools, like uh, right now we know, like I know you committed at Washington State, but like what other did you have other schools like interested in you or you feel me talking to you or was it right off the bat like you got that Washington State offer and you just committed? Like, Hell you no, know, nah, man, it's, it was a process. Like one thing also though, guys get mad about not getting the offers right away. That does not. Like unless you that guy, like you feel me, you got all the the clout, you're not gonna just get good offers right off the bat. You feel me? For me, I had to. You feel me? Wait until my last year there when we had the last chance, you and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, like after that season, then I started getting interest. Like school starting uh, having interest in me, and um, I got a few offers. Like I had the, my first offer was a partial offer from uh, Moorhead State. Okay. And then I had uh, Jacksonville in Florida. Uh huh. That was a partial, you feel me? But I wanted that full. I knew, like, all that work I put in, and, uh, you know, I had a, a good year that last year at yeah. Laney. I'm like, nah, I'm finna, you like, feel you me? Yeah, yeah, I already yeah. knew what I deserved. And then, eventually, a school in Northern Arizona, they had, the, you feel me? Oh, we're going to offer you. So, mm -hmm. 
you know, you want to talk about that? The, the whole, yeah, yeah, so Northern Arizona, they offered you, you feel me? Oh, we're going to offer you, you feel me? But one thing also, they say that they're going to offer you, but where's the paperwork? You uh, got to see the paperwork, okay. you feel me? So they flew me out there to Northern Arizona, and, um... Yeah, everything was cool, you feel me? They had me a nice room. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like the movie. I feel like I was, you feel me, like the superstar. But <laughs> right. they had a cake, everything everything laid out for Treating me. Everything, right. yeah, yeah, everything was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, look at this guy. Every, <laughs> everything was nice uh, until, like, that last mm-hmm. day there. I was only there. I was there for the weekend. Uh-huh. Like, I had the one-on-one with the head coach. And then previous to the visit, I had caught the flu. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it was just some corona stuff back in December. Uh, I had caught the flu and I lost like 10 pounds. Mm. I lost hella weight. And then, uh, yeah, the last day at the visit, he was one on one with the head coach. He was saying, uh, you know, you have all all the tools to, to play at the next level, but you're too small. Wow. And now, you know, when he said and that, I, that was the first time you probably ever heard that. Bro, it was not like <laughs> I always thought I was small, but it wasn't like I, I, I had caught the flu. Yeah. And then I, you know, I had I, I didn't think nothing of it. I'm like, I'm gonna put this weight on regardless of right. how they you feel. Right back so I'm like, you. I was already, I was just just being there, and like, I'm I'm gonna put the weight on so y'all can just offer. I was ready to sign. Mm. He said, "You're too small. Maybe, maybe uh, we hit you up later on down. The, you feel me? Later on down the line. Mind you, I already have my AA and everything. I was ready to go in the spring. Oh, so you was already. Ready I was ready to, to go in the spring. Yeah. And um, yeah, they they turned me down. Wow. So. On that on that flight back home, you know, I was like, I, I laughed it off because I was like, I already know my worth. Mm-hmm. I already know I'm gonna come back and really like. Right. I was trying to find a school within that that uh, conference, the Big Sky, but um, yeah, I, I just told myself like I'm gonna gonna prove everybody wrong. So so when did you get the Washington State offer, um, and how'd you connect with those coaches and, and uh, you know get that get that one because that's a huge offer right there. That ain't no regular huge school, man. So. That listen, that didn't come until because I went on a visit in December. That didn't come until. March, when I March when okay. I got that, um, I was just working. I was just working, you know, build, building my character. You mm-hmm. know, character goes a long way. So yeah, that's facts. you feel me. That's one of the reasons why Washington State offered me because of my character, and they they feel that I can be a leader over there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was just working for for months, and then um, you know, putting in that work and coach. I guess they was looking for. Uh, a defensive tackle because uh-huh. they have a whole new coaching staff at Washington State. Oh, so they just so they, really yeah. A lot of the guys that. came from Hawaii, um, and then a lot of guys came from uh, Wyoming. All the okay. coaching staff, so everybody was new. The yeah. whole coach, everybody was new. So which was a plus for me. Well, I was about to say it worked in your yeah, family, exactly. So. It was a plus for me, and they was looking for a D tackle, and then the head coach at Laney, You feel me? Everybody say your asshole and all that. He he is. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> he mean well. Yeah. Um, he connected the coaches to me. Like yeah. out of all the D tackles, you feel me? I had guys at Lane that I felt like it was better. He connected them to me, and then the head coach directly called me. You feel me? A lot of head coaches don't just and, directly yeah, you call just you. Talk to a position coach. You talk to the position coach and everything. Man. The head coach called me. That's what I gave him the host the rundown on everything. You feel me? My story. Mm-hmm. And then the, the 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 DC called me the same day. Run that whole rundown. Then the de- defensive tackle coach called me. Oh, so they were showing love. Yeah, they were showing real love. Yeah. But I still was like se- skeptical about. It. I'm like, you know what? It's a process. I don't know if they're gonna offer. It's just, just business at the end. Yeah, it's business. It's yeah. business. So I, I understood that. But um, yeah, man. Like when they when they did that, like a few weeks later, they was like, we're gonna fly you out. Okay. They didn't offer me though. We're uh-huh. gonna fly you out. I was there for two days. Uh huh. Um, the first day, you know, they showed you know. Uh, treat me right. Yeah, treat me right and stuff. But they told me before the before I even got there, it's like, dude, you gotta come with some size. I was just eating, eating, eating to, mm-hmm. to get big, you feel me? Because they mm-hmm. want me playing D-tackle. So I got on, you know, flew down there. I was meeting everybody. They showed mad love. And then the next day, like, at the end of the day, I talked to the head coach. You know, we talked about a whole bunch of stuff, my experiences there and how I liked it and all that. And um, and he was like, you know, we're going to offer you. And that right there was like, it was a shock. You know, I started, you know, I, when I called my mom, I was like, Man, we, you feel me? You know how that goes. My mom, yeah, yeah, my mom, you, you feel me? I was just, I was just, uh, just happy that I, you know, I accomplished that. Right. And, um, it was just surreal, dude. I, I just, man, just, uh, I don't know though. Like, obviously, you know, they brought you down there. They offered you. Um, you went through the whole recruiting process with NAU and all those other schools. But how do you know it was genuine there? How do you know it was love? Like when you got there, because you know, I, I, like you, like we said, it's a business. You it's know, a business. coach could just exactly. tell you, coach could tell you, like you come up here, you going you could play. Exactly, all this stuff, exactly, exactly. They all say that. Um, yeah, how do you know it was genuine from him? Well, I feel like the most the genuine thing was like beside the football part, 
Like they was like, oh, you're a good player and all that, but they didn't even. You feel me? They're talking about the leadership, uh-huh. my character and all that. But even w- with that, they they you know I'm Muslim, mm-hmm. so they took that in consideration and they like, we gonna try to find a mosque out here for you. Oh, you know, so like you real. know, yeah, yeah, try to show love to my to to my religion. So right. that's the biggest thing for me because. Beside the football and all that, like that's what they I. So they care about you outside of the football. Outside football, of the football, you yeah. feel me? Like a lot of coaches might say that, but they was genuine about it, and especially the de- the defensive uh, tackle coach, uh-huh. the D line coach. He was really like, you know, your family, bro. Like you gonna be a part of this this uh, organization yeah. before they even offered me. He was like, man, I'm f- I'm rooting for you. That's you feel me? Mean. And and when they was showing love about my religion and all that, that was that's what really like, wow, this is what, who I'm gonna play for. You feel me? Okay. And um. You know, I got that offer, and it was just, you know, just a blessing because without everybody in my corner, I wouldn't have got that. You feel me? My girl played a big role in that because mm-hmm. sometimes I wouldn't eat to put on a weight. She would cook up hella meals. She would do a lot of stuff. That's like, my girl did a lot for me. My mom, uh-huh. all the support. My play, you know, you you guys, too. Yeah, everybody yeah. that I played with, the coaches, everybody played a role in that. And that I'm just grateful because if I if, if it wasn't for everybody, I wouldn't have got that. So right. that's why I'm just hum- trying to be humble about it and go in there with the best intentions, okay. you know. And then uh, – you know, playing at Laney, you play with Coach Beam. He a legend. Like you said, a lot of people don't. It's, it's, it's two way street for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people don't like the way it is, but a lot of people get blessed from it. Right. How was it for you playing with Coach Beam? And what did you take from playing with Laney that you could take to the next level to Washington State? You know. So, so me personally, uh, playing with Beam was cool. I mean, I didn't really have no relationship with Beam okay. like to begin with. Like I, I shared it because I was there for three years at Laney. I gray shared it. And I was a part-time student. And then I played that 2018 year in 2019. Like, my last year there, that's when he was showing them the most love. Because, you know, he seen I was putting in that work. And say yeah. I was not, you know, I was not B- BSing with my time there. I was actually trying to do better. And I was actually do, doing uh, doing good. I had a uh, 3.5 leaving lane. Oh, okay. Which was so, the best. Bro. You feel know I me? Mean? Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I, I finesse. Hey, we get through it. We get, th- we get through it. I found a way to get 3. through 5, it. Three point five. That ain't no just getting through it though. That's we got through. You feel me? And I work for it. You feel me? But we we got we got through it. But um, yeah, I didn't have no relationship with Beam, but all the coaches there, they just they they show me what uh, they showed love because I I told you know I showed that I I was dedicated to the system. Okay. And uh, my last year there at Laney, like, it was no leadership, and um, I didn't really step up to the plate. I think that right there is what I can I know now. Going into I that next level, I can I can be the, I can be that leader and have that that I'm not really a vocal leader, but I can lead by example. That's right. That's one thing from Laney that I can take over. Mm-hmm. Even though I wasn't there, you know that at Laney, I know I can take that over and really because become, you learned that. Now. I learned that. I learned. Yeah. You feel me? I learned from my mistakes and, and and just everybody. So that that's one thing that I can take over. That's gonna be you feel me? That's it. Help me out. So uh, now you uh you know you about to be in your first season. I watched the stay. Hopefully we have a season. I'm praying we do. Cause Man, I gotta see my dog ball, but what can too, we man. what can we expect, man? What's your goals heading into this season? What you what you what you aspire to do once you get there, man? So my goals, you feel me? Like like I told you, I I, I doubt myself a lot, but my goals going in there, for the football wise, is just you know be a dog, put the, put everybody on. Like I'm trying to go in there and like not be afraid of nothing. I'm trying to go in there and be a dog, an animal, fr- learn from everybody at first. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's what you gotta do. I'm not gonna be in there being arrogant. I wanna go in there humble. Take notes, learn from everybody, learn the playbook. But I, I want to get in that rotation, and then I'm eventually want to start. Like I'm not sitting on the bench. Yeah, I know no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. sit on the bench. No, I'm not. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to do that. And God put me in the position for a reason, so I'm going to go in and take it. You feel me? And a, another th- one of my goals is to be become uh, spiritually and mentally, you know, stronger. Mm-hmm. I'd say the, a better version of myself going in. Like uh, yeah. I want to start reading the, reading the books and mm-hmm. praying more because you know I'm gonna pray more uh-huh. and. Just become an overall better man, and as a black man in this society, in this in, in America, man. I want to be the best that I can be. You feel me? So learn, cool. learn from others, and and take my schooling seriously. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And get that degree because that's what it, the end goal is. You feel that's me? What's up, bro? So that's that's my goal is going in. Well, man, I appreciate you coming out and talk to me, man. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm wishing the best for you. I can't wait to see my guy balling, bro. Be high product. Yes, sir. Yeah, we was weak in, we, we Our team might have been weak in high school, man, but we D1 now, man. We black <laughs> men trying to do something better, man, yeah, for the community. Yeah, we, you see, he doing his thing. We trying to do we trying to do, do uh, good for, for ourselves and, and for our other brothers. So yeah, I yeah. appreciate him coming in and interviewing me. And, uh, appreciate you, too, And keep man. grinding, bro. We're going yeah, to yeah. make it to the top. Yes, sir. I appreciate yes, sir. you, man. Yeah, we going to make it to the top. Y'all yes, sir.